We will present a paper about federated learning and it's called communication efficient learning of deep networks from decentralized data. The problem tried to solve in this paper arises from the fact that data is privacy sensitive and large in quantity. Thus, it may not be appropriate to share it. This is where federated learning comes into play. It leaves training data in mobile devices and it shares locally computed updates in mobile devices rather than the data with server. Mobile devices have a wide variety of sensors and computing power. Thus, it would be a good practice to use them in AI projects and researches. It's, however, risky to keep all these data on servers in terms of privacy and sensitiveness of the data. In federated learning, task is solved by participating devices in which we call client in this terminology coordinated by a central server. Each client keeps its local data set in it, not uploading that to the server. Each client computes gradient from its own data set and updates the global model with it. For each client, this gradient is the only thing that is shared with the server. In this way, model training is decoupled from the need for direct access to the raw training data. Federated optimization has several key properties compared to a typical distributed optimization problems. The first property is non-IID dataset meaning local dataset do not fully represent the whole dataset. The second property is unbalanced dataset, meaning some mobile devices make heavier use than the others, leading an unbalanced dataset. The third property is massively distributed system, meaning there are really a lot of mobile devices in the system. And the final property is devices with limited communication. Some of the mobile devices might be either offline, slow or expensive to connect. So, here we'll have a look at an animation of how federated learning algorithm works. The global model parameters are passed to the mobile devices so that the devices can update the model by their own local dataset. Some C fraction of mobile devices are selected in order to implement stochastic gradient descent algorithm. Every device computes gradients with its local dataset with a predefined local epoch number of times. In this way, the devices improve model performance locally. Then, those locally updated global parameters are passed back to the central server. Then, central server averages those locally updated parameters and comes up with a model that takes full advantage of locally updated models. And, this procedure repeats until the model converges. There are two primary aspects of this algorithm. The first one is how to compute global and local loss function. And the second one is how to compute global and local gradient calculation and update the state. Local loss function can be seen here. It's actually any loss function that will be optimized with the local dataset. The objective function of the federated learning is weighted average of the local loss functions. When this function is optimized, all mobile devices would be optimized. There are two alternatives in order to implement federated learning algorithm. The first one is gradient-based, whereas the second one is model-based. We'll dive into the second one. In the second alternative, since local devices update the global model locally, they can keep computing gradient and updating the model for a local epoch amount of time. In this way, communication costs reduce substantially. Second approach seems more promising which allows us some advantages. We can add more computation to each client by iterating the local update multiple times before the averaging step. This is called federated averaging. Second approach fits real world problems more. That's why this strategy is selected for experiments. Computation is controlled by three key parameters for this approach. The first key parameter is C the fraction of clients that perform computation on each round. The second one is E, number of training passes each client, makes over its local dataset on each round. And the last one is B, local minimum batch size used for the client updates. We can summarize the algorithm as follows. Every round, choose a random subset of M clients. For each client, 
parallelly update global model partially in every client for E number of local epoch with B bit size. Take weighted average of these partially updated models and have the updated model for that round and repeat the process above. There are two main experiments conducted. We'll be immersing in IID MNIST dataset and CNN setup. The architecture is a basic CNN model consisting of two convolution layers followed with max pooling, a fully connected layer and a soft max layer. The dataset is IID, meaning it is shuffled before being distributed to clients. Using more competition, increasing E and decreasing B amine, speeds up the convergence time 35 times for the CNN. We can see this by checking where E equals 20 and B equals 10 in the table. The incrementing convergence time for IID dataset is substantial. Federated averaging also acts as a regularization since it helped the model converge faster. We can see once more that increasing E and decreasing B lets the model converge the fastest. The more the color of the color the, the more the color of the curve is reddish, the more quickly the model converges by increasing E and decreasing B. Here is the demo of our project. We trained the model with 300 epochs and got the result almost as same as the ones in the paper. This shows that even layer averaging algorithm works quite well and can help us not to share our own data in order to have a good model. To sum up, federated averaging trains high quality models using relatively few rounds of communication. It offers many practical privacy benefits, such as differential privacy and secure multi-party computation. Thank you.